Like your Cholula. <laughs> Want to say hi to everybody, Papa Hunter? Hi, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Everybody's praying for you. <laughs> helping me figure out some shade options. He really thinks outside the box. I appreciate that about you. <laughs> I'm an old boxer from way back. It's good. That should do it. So our thought is that we're gonna provide west Western exposure shade, you'll see. And then we also did this one up. We made a little cattle panel trellis. Looks like a tiny chicken coop. <laughs> yes. For watermelons. Yes, for our melons. So, melon hopefully I can sling them up. I'll give them a little bit more room because I don't have a lot of room to sprawl. John Kruger melon coop. Oh my goodness. So I think right now I'll order another big one like I've got on there. But for right now, I think just block it. Yeah, let's just tie it like this and see what it looks like this afternoon. Yeah. So our idea right now is just block the western sun, but then we might come up with a, attach it here and string a big tarp like along here to cover this side, we'll see. So now I'm going to take these hoops, these shade hoops, and put them over on top of my peppers. Because peppers love sun, but not that much sun. Okay, it'd be great if I had some shade cover to go over it. <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> but I'm all out, so i got to order some more. But yes, we're ready. Okay, sh you guys, so I got out my old shade structure that I made out of PVC. See, it was kind of like that, if you can see that. There we go, it went kind of on there. It was very high, yeah. And <laughs> protected my tomato plants, but the wind just blew it off, so. But I thought, I gave up on it a little bit too soon. So I was thinking about a way I could just use it on top of like the cattle panel to just keep the shade cloth off of the plants. But then, my night in baseball cap and jeans had a different idea. He was saying, why don't we go ahead and just take the shade all the way from there and stretch it up yeah to the next cattle panel and just cover the whole this whole area of the garden so i thought brilliant that's why i love him he thinks outside the box so anyway we're just ciphering on shade this morning trying to get more of it because it's so hot you guys I'll just stand here and hold it. It's only going to be 106. <laughs> hey, some like it hot. You would know. <laughs> I think my idea is going to work, you guys. We're going to keep working at it. What do you guys think? Look at that. See, I gave up on my PVC shade frame structure too soon. So I just used different pieces and parts from the big box store and I glued this part together with PVC glue. And came down to a joint. There we go. Look at that, you guys. It's a little tent for my tomatoes. It's a tomato tent. <laughs> I don't blame you. Me neither. The, toma the tomatoes are going to be happy, happy, happy though. Okay, so it'd be a lot to take off when I need to garden though, but for a while I won't have to mess with these tomatoes. Are you sure that's not too much shade? 
I don't think it's too much shade, but I could be wrong. We'll see what happens. Okay, I really like it. This one's held down with bricks and this one has the frame on it, so it definitely lifts it off of the plants more on this one, so I do like it. I did really like the idea, though, that my baseball cap and <laughs> that my knight and baseball cap and jeans had as far as bringing it straight over the top because that would give me shade and shelter while I'm gardening and it would open up this space so I don't have to take these down every time I want to plant something, which will be in just a minute, you guys. So I do like it, but I really like his idea. So we'll, we're going to keep working at it. Shade, you guys, send me your best shade. I want to hear about it in the comments. All right, it's time to plant those sunrise bumblebee that I rooted. They've been in water about two weeks. And I also bought a summer set from the feed store that I'm going to pop in there too. All right, you guys. Well, this morning I can't find a very essential part of my tripod that adapts to my camera. So I can't use my tripod. So this should be interesting. But <laughs> we're going to carry on. So if you have a lot lower view than usual, how low can you go? <laughs> that might be, yeah. We'll see. Before I can plant, I need to take off the sh this shade cloth and put it up because that is that is the disadvantage of this, but it's okay. So glad to have shade. Let's do this. I have two types of hooks. I have this type, which I, I'll link up in the description. So it fits around the PVC. And then I have this type. I will try to find it and link up, but I got these a long time ago, so. All right, Let's get this out of my way. No, that's not so hard. Okay, let's plant these babies. Oh, fertilizer. We're ready, I got my fertilizer. I just get it from my feed store, but Tomato Tone, I'll link up to a good fertilizer also that you could get online. So I, let, I cut down these Sunrise Bumblebees. I left a couple of them, see if I could nurture them through. But ones like this, I don't have much hope for. So I'm gonna replace that one with a plant and probably that one too and yeah some on this side are blank spaces okay I'm gonna plant my tomatoes freedom 4th of July tomatoes I'm a little late but better late than never better late than never lots of good mulch yay Oh, is a little worm. <laughs> Throw some fertilizer in the air. Got some happy frog potting soil mix I'm going to toss in there too. So we'll be happy, happy, happy. Okay. Let's pick my best one with the most roots. Oh, they all have a lot of roots, you guys. Very good. Okay, this is probably my best one. See, no real roots beyond this point. So we're gonna cut that off. Lots of mulch bag. Okay, grow, 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 grow. Fall tomatoes, you guys. This is where it starts. Oh, I hope it does okay. It'll like this shade. I'm glad it got the new shade up. All right. And life giving water. This shades me, too, you guys, while I'm working. So, this is actually pretty pleasant. Okay, good. 
Shade. It's a wonderful thing in Dallas, Texas in the summer. All right, they don't look like much now, but hopefully they will perk up. I'll keep it well watered and the shade. It's definitely going to help. Oh, come on. You can survive. You can do this. Sunrise bumblebee. It's really time to fertilize the whole garden. So I'm going to take that thick mulch away from the plants. And drop in some fertilizer. Time to feed everything. The best fertilizer, of course, is earthworm castings and mealworm frass because it's got all the good bacteria already in it. But, you know, if you don't have those things, which I don't have my worm bin going right now, I've got to fix that. All right, then regular fertilizer is great. Now I'm gonna plant some tomatoes on the side of these peppers over here. Peppers and basil and tomatoes on the side. Let's do this. Okay, time to get those fall tomatoes in in Dallas, Texas. I picked an early girl because they bloom early, so that works for fall too, and a summer set. Let's see if I can see. There we go, summer set. It's supposed to set even during the summer heat. Now I don't think it'll set even during our hot summer heat, but in the fall, <laughs> towards the fall, it might earlier than most. All right, and then the last one is I rooted a crimson carmillo, so that's gonna go down here. All right, let's do this. Time to plant your fall tomato, your, your tomatoes for fall, for fall harvest. Don't forget to fertilize, mulch, and shade. And of course, water. <laughs> I keep saying I'm gonna do one more thing you guys then go in it's it's about 11 o'clock and it's getting dangerously hot out here so I really am gonna do one more thing and then take it on in I'll show you my Tasmanian chocolates are looking horrible you guys <laughs> terrible and they didn't really root up very well not sure why so I'm gonna trim the ones that I think maybe I can salvage trim them up give them some fertilizer and a little dose of happy frog potting mix shout out to happy frog all right let's do this Well, this might be a waste of time. They might not do anything. They might just roll up and die, but we'll see. I'm hoping a sprout might come out. There's a little one there. I'm hoping some of these joints might have sprouts. We'll see. This is the first time using Happy Frog for me, but my friend of mine swears by it. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I'm just giving it a try. She says that it really makes her plants grow well. So, these tomatoes need all the help they can get. <laughs> Now there were a couple Tasmanian chocolates that rooted a little bit. <laughs> they look pretty bad though. <laughs> They're all crunchy, but I'm going to trim them up and plant them in these two that definitely didn't make it. Just give it a try. Probably won't make it, but we'll try it. Okay, you guys, I'm going to water these beautiful babies. <clears throat> oh my goodness, it's getting so hot out here. And then I promise I'm going to go in. Stay shaded, stay cool, stay safe. Bye, you guys. Hey you guys, the next few videos that I am going to be doing is all about fertilizer, different types of fertilizer for your garden. Because just like we might have food shortages, don't know for sure, but we might have some food shortages, fertilizer also might be hard to come by. I know it, it is becoming hard to come by for farmers. So we'll see, but um, yeah, I'd love to give you guys some out of the box ways to provide fertilizer for your garden 
to keep it more sustainable. So today it's all about vermicomposting. I am at my friend Lynn's house today. <laughs> and look how much they've gotten done! Oh yeah! <laughs> yes! You guys did a great job on that. I pulled a Kool-Aid man. <laughs> <laughs> the Hoop Coop from Living Traditions Homestead. I will link it up to their video making it. But you guys did an awesome job. So the next step is probably to attach the chicken wire, right? Yeah, chicken wire over the top, hardware cloth on the front and the back. Uh, on the back side, I'd like to do a uh, access to nest boxes. Nest boxes, yeah. You're because gonna. The Living Traditions didn't do that, so you're gonna make an improvement on the model. But I thought, well, you know, Watch. for what we're doing, it would be because this is it. There is no run. It's a run, coop, everything. They're always going to be in here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, they won't well always not be, always, but, but this is yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, you have your nesting, your um, roosting bars like this. But I thought if I came in and put a, um, a board here. Yeah. Or right even here, actually get lower. And then you could have your nest boxes out here. Absolutely. And then yes. And you have a flap on the back that opens up so you yes. can get the eggs without necessarily having to walk all the way through. That is a great <laughs> idea. You yes. Not that it's not oh, that's a great idea. Through, yeah. Awesome. Long term, that would be a good choice. Yes. For those of you who think that letting the chickens just in the backyard, that's how I did my first chickens. Like I, I thought little house in the prairie, they'll just run around. But no, what they will do is they will go up to the porch and press against the glass door and poop there <laughs> because it's cooler there. Yeah, so there will be chickens on the porch. Sure. Yeah, so that no, it doesn't work. The door of the back porch. And they both of the animals love to come in here and just lay down, so. In here? Yes. In the coop? Yes. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I, I think they think I built it for them. Oh, <laughs> for yeah. entertainment, I guess. Chewy, a yeah. dog house for you, a huge yeah. dog house. <laughs> that's funny. Really funny. Her ponds are doing great. They're so pretty. I need to get some of that lily, I think. Uh, that's the uh, dwarf avola. That little lily, lily. yeah. It's a, the creamy blossom. It's, it's yeah. a lily bell here. It's so very happy. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, Look at one. that, you guys. This dwarf, the pyrus, always. Just count. He seems to keep it straight. It looks to fall over. I've had some people ask me. They can't believe that it's this easy like they want to go through the care again and you've got little fish oh, yeah. in there you can see can you see them right there oh, oh yeah I'm sorry, little I was touching little oh mosquito they're on the fish. other side of the papyrus now too <laughs> yeah well they're in there i don't know if you guys can yep. see them but i refer to those Look as the little those. brown mouse of the mosquito fish control mosquito control world okay yeah, and you don't need any aeration fish. no you yep. don't need any aeration yep. and you just when you fill it up do you just fill it up with the hose when it yep. gets low just put it in the hose. Yep. Okay, people can't believe it's this easy. They're like, well, you it's know, gotta be it, more complicated it does than seem that. Like it should be really, really complicated. And you know, I'm a perfectionist. So the fact that it's this easy and like stupid easy, um, honestly shocks me too, but yeah, okay. it is this easy. All right. So Lynn has helped me get started again with my vermicomposting bin. So we brought, we bought two bins. And now we're doing the holes. Like butter. There's not really a right or wrong way to have holes. It's just you want enough holes so that your lechate can drain out. Because, you know, worms will die if by drowning. So this is just lifted up a, a bit so it'll drain all the, what's it called, leche, leche. leche. out of the bottom. Yes. Yep. 
I did have a vermicomposting bin, but the, it froze solid in the and Snowmageddon. Yeah. We'll see, I think it's good that, that the two bins, I think, insulate it better. Well, that could be possibly so. true. And I think I may have, I think I put some more wood scraps in front of it, just kind of building a, a little bit of a barrier. I don't remember covering it. If I had had straw bales, I'd put a straw bale in front of it. Yeah, that would be good, yeah. Just because it's on the northern side of my house, but it's protected on three sides. So only the northern side is actually completely exposed. Yeah, okay. But I don't think I put anything. I might have, maybe and I, I don't think we're going to have another. Well, maybe. we we only had that once in. Yeah, ever. Uh, ever. Yeah, ever. Uh, we're going to, uh, I think I might have brought some leaves or something around it. I don't remember mm, maybe doing so. a lot for it. Yeah. I just kind of hope for the best. Oh, well, good. They're fine. Good. Okay. Can't wait to have so. earthworm castings again. So we got cocoa core. No mixed brick as you guys can see and it's three, three yeah bricks. three different bricks because if you get the huge solid one i guess you said that we need well, we would have to use a saw you can't the get. whole 2.5 cubic feet of it's a beautiful amount and it's a great price but buckle up because you're gonna have to saw it apart so this is a lot more manageable in terms of let's get this done today and not spend three hours cutting coconut core yes Sounds good. So now we're gonna hydrate it for our worms to start our bin. So we just realized we need to hydrate it. <laughs> In a bin that doesn't have holes. Yes. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. It's okay. No, I guess I'm gonna find out, but I'm curious. Will it just swell up and then it breaks apart? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. But it's got to sit and hydrate for a while. Okay. Now it's... Okay, so we put about how much, so this, how much water? So this was three of uh, those coconut blocks. This is three of those coconut blocks mm -hmm. and about approximately, well, each one of these is 1. 1. 1.32 gallons. So this is 2.64 gallons of water. Okay, so a little Very over. Very specific. <laughs> a little over two gallons of water, three bricks, yes. And it's about, and how do you know it's the right consistency okay, for the so worms? For people that are cooks, you know how when you are cooking something, you can make it into a, and it holds its shape? That's kind of right. But you really don't want it to be dripping water like this. This is a little wet. Now, this is also just, just, const, just reconstituted, just rehydrated. So I think that part of what we've got going on is that we've got water inconsistently throughout the bin. But I think if we just add another block, another block, brick, brick, yeah. brick of the coconut, and just set it in here, it'll probably be the right consistency. Quickly. Okay. All right. Okay, we're going to put, we want to move it all to the bin okay. with the holes in it yes. so it can drain. So we're going to put one in there and then transfer the rest. We're ready for our worms. So this is a hot frog indoor composter. I mean, I guess you could have it outdoors. It's too small in my opinion for outdoors. Okay. <coughs> because my bin here didn't freeze in the winter time, but it's also much larger. Yeah. So each one of these is a layer, oh. right? So it totally comes oh, apart. Look at that. So you can see how wet that is. See, I've got worms. Yeah. But it's super, super wet. And not okay. sure why it's so wet, but this is not an ideal circumstance. Oh. There's a lot of worms in there, but look how- Oh, it is really wet. I mean, it doesn't smell bad at all. It doesn't smell at all. It just is super duper wet. That's good. Hey, so worms. Hi, worms. Happy worm home. Yes. So I hope you don't mind taking this no, it's great. Very. That's no, it great. I'm glad to help you uh, clean it so out because you're getting stink. rid of this. So. Yeah, I, I don't. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not the volume that it's really needful. Oh, I'm so excited to get earthworms again. So you're helping me out. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. So you well, were saying that this, the purpose of this bin, which is very interesting, is to feed them in the top, and then yeah. all the 
all the worms go to the top, right. and then you can harvest. Yeah, you can feed them in the bottom, feed them in the top, the whatever frass. works better for you. And I'm sure it works great if... That makes sense. It does make sense. And it's not a bad system. It's just not very big. Yeah. And I don't water them. That's the other thing. I have never, pretty much never, ever watered the worms. They get yeah. their water solely from the food. From the scraps. See. Okay. And the bed itself maintains a level of moisture because you're always doing something to it. You know, you've got food in there. And the worms themselves... Um, you know, create the lechate and keep the, it, you know, the, all, not all the lechate just goes immediately to the bottom, to the second bin. It goes, that looks like a little, no, that's the end of a worm. You know, it goes, I don't know, it just, I, it, I, I just don't like that smaller bin. Okay. It's not very, it's cute. Yeah, oh, it is. It's cute yeah. in the house, and if I hadn't told you what it was, you'd probably never know what it was. Yeah. You could use yeah, it as right. a end table. I mean, honestly. Yeah, true. A worm, totally a worm bin end table. That's so funny. It so is tiny. super cute. It's very cute. <laughs> and it was like 150 bucks. It's not like it was cheap or anything. Yeah, yeah true. You know I mean? true. So my, my, my council is... Yeah, this is much cheaper, this bigger bin. Well, I mean, this worm Because that was $12. Up, well, this this these bins are 15 bucks a whack. Right. So, so okay. Two, so yeah, two fifteen dollar bins and twenty four dollars in coconut core. For the that coconut core. Today. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, so as we, compared to, so the coconut core is about ten that we used. No, you use more like fourteen dollars. Fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So and then your worms are from your happy friend who's crazy about worms too. Yes. So, so about forty five to get started, and then. But even if you had to buy worms, you could probably buy. 500 or a thousand worms for 25 30 bucks yeah true so and it's only a one-time cost of getting started still talking about this bin right here even at 120 dollars it just for the bin it's not for any yeah else. true true it's just the bin yeah true i mean it's not bad so and if this is quite all, a bit twice the size and half the cost yeah yeah so you get, basically it's a, it's a whole different volume level and yeah. like i said i found it easier to deal with a larger volume than a smaller one Yes. Yeah, but you gotta do what works for you. Yay. Okay. They definitely thrive on neglect though. <laughs> and I, I a lot of times will let food I have in fact when I very first got them, I would take food that was old and I would use my blender to blend it up and freeze it. Okay. Because you had too much of it uh, to no, put add to the bin. that's what people online were talking about doing. They were making it, oh. uh, getting really fancy with it and doing all this crazy stuff. And oh, so I had okay. Yeah, no, no. Worm for food, ice cubes, and I'd put a big ice cube, you know, big thing of ice in there. And with all the old, you know, the half decayed worm food, because it's already masticated, right? And it's already uh -huh. chewed up. Okay. And worm, so they, clearly this is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. You can do all that. Nothing wrong with all that. <laughs> you don't need to. Yeah, unless you just right. want to. That's a yes. want to, not a need to. Yes, true. And then what you do, the way you you harvest is you just feed one side, yeah. and then you scoop up the rest and put yeah. that in your garden. Yeah, you feed one side, and then you just like you can get fancy and get a you know sifter and strain out your worms. And I'm a little more redneck, I guess, than that. And I just kind of go for it and hope that if I see a worm, I pull it out. If I don't see the worm, God bless you. Yes. Little worm, have a good time. Add it to the garden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When some of them are probably going to make it. I mean, where'd they all come from? Yeah, absolutely. And you probably have some cross Absolutely. Okay, yay. Good to get started with worms again and their poop, mainly. Yeah, so that I don't think you need to. I would. I really wouldn't feed this. I would definitely not feed it more than once a week. And once a week is a lot. Okay. So yes. this is my outdoor worm bin. And I'm just going to demonstrate how I feed them. What I have to feed them today is some really old and moldy oatmeal. <laughs> and raisins and that kind of thing. I made it for mm. breakfast for my son. It looks delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> and um, he didn't ever eat it. And then I got some old chrysanthemums that have been that have spent their lives being beautiful, and now they are not beautiful, and they will go to feed my worms. So since this worm bin is outside, and I have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of leaves, I just in good making use of what you have fashion. I just use what I've got. So this has been fed. Do you smell that wonderful dirt smell? That's you so guys nice. smell. It just smells like fresh <laughs> it does. dirt. It does. Like smell it's. Good. It just smells like you know fresh dirt that's been rained on. You know. Yeah, yeah, it does. It has a it good just earthy so smell. So good. Yeah, I love that smell. So this has been. I never can remember which side I fed. And now that I brought it inside, I definitely don't remember. Uh, oh, here's some 
something. Oh, I think this is an apple. Yeah, I fed some worm the worms have an apple. I just put it in their hole because I'm very lazy. So um, here's the magic of worms. There you go. That kind of smells bad. So if your food is not good anymore, as long as it doesn't have any oil or meat or dairy or what have you, you can feed it to your worms. It's whatever you got. So and then you just cover it up. Oh, there's a little worm right there. So when, yeah, they must all be at the bottom. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's Maybe pretty hot outside, hot, and I may yeah. have fed them on the other side. They, we may have a worm ball over here on this other side. I don't really know. Let's go search them. Let's see. I heard somebody online, I haven't tried it yet, to put, um, if they love banana peels, so oh, put banana peels. They in mine in love banana peels. To harvest the worms out. Oh, yeah. oh that you, makes sense. If you, you, you take the worms out, and then you dump the rest of the bin, the, the, yeah, you can see into your garden and start again. I've got some little other creepy crawlies on this side. Yeah. But this is there's more worms over here too. Looks and I should say again, we're inside because of air conditioning. Yeah, we're inside because it's, it's so really hot. hot <laughs> but this does stay outside. Yeah, it's an outside bin. All oh, here's time. my creepy yes. collies. See that guy right there? Yes. I don't know what that is, but he's in there. He's happy. But this bin doesn't look like I got a lot of worms in it. But it, you know, it may be that it, it's just so hot. You know, yeah, I mean, it's got some worms down in, it. in the bottom. But I also went for like probably a month without feeding them. So, I mean, your, your population of worms is going to ebb and flow depending on how you manage you them you feed them. Yeah. them. And, you yeah. know, um, it's really, when it's really, really hot and really, really cold, I mean, do you want to do anything but lay around? I don't know. I don't. So, <laughs> you know, I think worms are kind of the same. Just, Amen. They don't really want to get out and party. This is just leaves from the yard. And yeah. It works. I mean, you can awesome. see they it, it, it's kind of moist. You know, the, the the earth is, this is moist, it's not dry. I never water it, ever. Got a lot of little babies over on this side. Yes. Well, that was kind of like a little mini worm ball. Mm -hmm. Yay. Okay, thanks for showing us your bin. There you go. All right, you guys, that is where I put my worm bin in the backyard against this wall. I think it will stay shaded all the time completely. I'm gonna have to watch it, but I think it will. So hopefully it won't get too hot, won't get too cold. <laughs> we'll see. Well, you guys, that was super fun getting into worms again. That fertilizer is wonderful for the garden, so I can't wait to harvest my first batch of worm poop. Anyway, if I think we covered it all, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will be sure to answer them for you.